Razer has been killing it with their new wireless products, and now they have some exciting wired products. Enter the Viper 8K. Good afternoon, morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Rich of the Four Piece Variety from KFC. And I've been testing the Viper 8K now for about a week, which is the kind of testing time that I actually like to take on things because I've actually discovered some very interesting things about this mouse. But starting off with the physical mouse itself and the setup that you get, it's a true ambidextrous mouse. It's really nice in its length, uh, even me with my bigger palms. I can palm fully on this and I'm a palm grip kind of guy. And if you are a claw kind of guy, they have separated the buttons from the rest of the chassis. So they can click all the way at the back of the mouse over here so you can claw up as much as you would need to. The reason that I say that this is a true ambidextrous design is because there are thumb buttons on both sides of the mouse, two of each. So if you're a lefty or a right-handed person, then you've got those two thumb buttons that we absolutely desperately need these days in gaming, isn't it? I mean, you could probably use the ones on the other side of the mouse if your hand was like, if you have like extreme, extreme finger and hand control, then you could feasibly use all eight of the programmable buttons. On the back of the mouse, you'll also find a very nice RGB zone. This can be customized in the normal Razer Chroma ways. The cable is a braided ProFlex cable that doesn't get in your way when you're gaming and basically has almost no feel on the mouse. The mouse itself comes in at a healthy 71 grams. That's incredibly impressive, especially when you consider that there are no holes drilled into this one. On the bottom of the mouse, you'll find two really big PTFE feet, the hole for the sensor, obviously. And then right at the bottom is the profiling button. And I actually like that they've put it there instead of right behind the scroll because accidental clicks are rendered practically impossible. One of the concerns I do have for this physical setup though is the rubberizing itself. It does feel quite nice, but I'm taken back to rival days when that would wear out and then there was literally glue underneath your thumb, in which case you would want to throw it into a wall. And that would only take about eight months. So I just hope that this is a lot better quality than that was. The scroll is also pretty good. It's rubberized itself and it's got a nice tactile feedback to it. Much prefer that to free scrolls, to be very honest, or the ability to switch between, but that makes the mouse exceedingly heavy. So the way they've executed it, is perfectly fine. The middle click is also pretty good and does give a good feedback. And speaking of feedback, this is where we need to talk about the buttons in the mouse. Rezzers employed their own optical switch here once again. And I must be honest, while it does respond very quick, which is what they're going for, the bounce back speed is a little bit of an issue for me. As someone who plays a lot of RTS and MOBA, it does take a little bit longer to bounce back than the old Omrons. And for FPS, of course, with that response time, where you're usually not spamming click unless it's a you know semi-auto DMR kind of weapon or something to that effect, it's not really that much of a deal breaker, to be honest. I just would prefer to give just a little bit more feedback than it does. It does come off just a touch hollow. But now we move on. So the most important thing in the mouse, obviously, is the sensor and the polling rate. And while the sensor specifications are drool worthy with the 20K DPI and that 8000 Hertz maximum refresh rate or polling rate, it kind of does have a couple of issues, especially with Tarkov and Call of Duty were the two areas that I found that the 8 kilohertz response rate was actually a bit of an issue. These weren't present in CS, but in both Tarkov and Call of Duty, I had to slow it down to 2000 hertz polling rate. At 8000 and even at 4000, as you'll see by the images on your screen, it would just skip like from really far left to really far right on a fast sweep. It would almost completely stop tracking, which is kind of productive. It's not what it's supposed to do, right? But obviously in CS, it was silky, silky smooth. And honestly, 1000 hertz to 2000 hertz, there is a noticeable difference in the tracking, but even at 4000 and 8000 in CS, it 
kind of becomes a zero sum game. 2000 Hertz, I mean 2000 positional updates per second. It's already extreme. You can modify all of this in the software though, so it's not really the end of the world. And as games get updates, I'm sure the 8000 Hertz will become more and more supported. I mean, the overall package of this is extremely premium and I love that it is ambidextrous because a lot of the time lefties are sort of left out in the cold with nothing really that's well specced or well put together, etc. And this is very much both of those things. I mean, they even throw in this handy little travel bag, which is quite nice. TLDR then for this review is well made, well put together, nice shape, really good mouse, all things considered, weight, ProFlex cable, Everything about the mouse is a really good experience. I've had a really good time with this mouse and I would continue to use it. It is, I would say, much better than my Model O. Even on 2000 Hertz, it is noticeably better on tracking. Perhaps it is just that little bit overkill. Anyway, that is all I have for you in this review. If you have enjoyed it, please do hit us up with a like and subscribe and I'll see you on the flip side. Why is it every time I film that there's a plane or something or a hardy doll or something? Can everybody just leave me alone?